We're going to move on anyway to our number eight in the list, and it is Denny Villeneuve's Dune. Speaking about independent content. Um, <laughs> now, uh, when we went to see this, uh, did we review this, John? I can't remember. We did review this, we, did review we gave this I an A. I think <laughs> at that point it uh, hadn't been officially confirmed, although I think everyone and it, their dog... It confirmed on the night? Uh, yeah. We reviewed it? Yeah, you, that's you right. You brought it up. That's right. Yeah. You're absolutely right, John, because we did a little intro with yeah. the breaking news that the studio confirmed the part two as if we didn't know that was not going to happen <laughs> but, uh, yeah Denny Villeneuve uh, starring Timothy Chalamet I, I could be here all day actually saying who stars in this film it's it's like who's who Rebecca Ferguson who we all love Zendaya she's third in the billing for some reason on IMDb she, she's, she's done it for five honest, minutes but fair, yeah. she has got a presence we were talking about you know actors and, and, and we'll so get into are, that yeah. shortly there's yeah. lights of sin it comes on <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> a fan of Zendaya <laughs> I quite like it. Yeah. Uh, you speak about actors that will do something different, that will test themselves. She goes off and does a sort of black and white piece. Yeah. With John David Washington, if that's what his name is. I always get it mixed up. Is it David John or John David? I think it's John David. John David. Yeah, you can John she, David. Yeah, yeah, she'll work with him and do a small sort of pandemic piece. Mm. Then she'll go off and do a huge big blockbuster. Denny Villeneuve movie. So I like actors that test themselves that do things yeah. different. I, 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 another film, Gianni, that, uh, you know, when you look at your top 10, it's so high up. In the rankings, yeah. or low down, I should say, sorry, in the rankings uh, coming in at number eight. Now, um, if. Some wouldn't have it on at all. Well, this is the thing, you know, and uh, I don't know why. Why would you not have June in your Just top ten? The book is very mummy. It's very. Yeah, the book is, John. People love it. People have a real hatred for it. Yeah. It's like everything else. Everything will connect different. Yeah. Um, depending on who yeah. you are. But yeah, so. Dune is one of my favourite novels ever how do you pronounce it Gianni I'm intrigued because um, I've Dune. heard certain Canadian yeah. content creators on YouTube saying Dune we say Dune are you halfway house are you kind of I, I, I say Dune Dune there you go that's alright <laughs> that's fine man both are absolutely both are valid I'll not attack you. Yeah, yeah. I mean what if I was just saying done like you know that yeah that'd be oh, weird yeah. <laughs> no but uh, no, it's one of my favorite novels ever. Um, I was so excited for this movie. Um, I. Uh, <laughs> oh, cool. Wait I, like, again, I, Jenny. I, I think I wrote in the Wait, review. I think my first, um, like the first sentence of that uh, particular part of the review, I said like to the surprise of no one, this movie makes my top ten um, because everybody knows me knows that I love this this book so much. Uh, it's I don't know. It's like an infectious sort of part of me. I think that it's brilliant. I think it's. It, it does for science fiction what, and we were talking about this before, I think we started rolling, but it does yeah. for, for science fiction what J.R. Tolkien did for fantasy. Yeah. And I think that um, ultimately the movie succeeds on, on a couple of different things. One, Villeneuve clearly loved the source material as much as I did, which I, you know, you, you just recognize that immediately in a director that's helming material like this. Um, but, but I think more importantly, he, with that, he was able to sort of take a step back, which I think people who really love material like this, like Lynch, like Lynch when he made his dude, right? He was too close to it to really allow for any breathing room to exist in a new medium. And I think that if you're adapting a work, if you're not willing to actually take the risk to adapt that work, to take that work and, and try to, it, not necessarily do something different, but at least twist the things that that maybe could be cleaned up make things a little easier to digest for the new type of audience you're trying to introduce yeah. if you're not willing to do the legwork to do that then you shouldn't be adapting it in the first place yeah and unfortunately i don't think that when david lynch did it and maybe this is sacrilegious for people who love dune but i stand by it when david lynch did the adaptation he was he was too married to the source material he wanted everything to be pinpointed exactly as it yeah. was and the things that he did change were not changed for the betterment of that film. I mean, he changed a, a martial arts style to a, a shooting a gun. Mm. And I think that ultimately that defeats the stakes. And, and, and it's just a, a sort of nonsensical mess the rest <clears> of the movie. But Villeneuve <laughs> was so married to this material, but he wasn't afraid to take a step back. And Very say, much like Peter Jackson. Okay, yeah, yeah. The Lord of the Rings. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. How, but he was, but so he was saying, he was like, how can we introduce concepts like the Bene Gesserit, how can we introduce concepts like the voice to this new audience that doesn't mean necessarily the inner narration of Paul's monologue, right? Mm. How can we introduce those different concepts and make them still digestible for the visual medium? And what I love most about Dune, and I knew we were in good hands, 
right in those first opening minutes when they do this scene that's not really in the novel, this like breakfast scene and she makes him do the voice to get to pass a glass of water. And I thought that was so brilliant and it showed me immediately off the bat. I was like, Willem Nunez knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to adapt this material and make it interesting, provocative and digestible for the new audience yeah. who's maybe seeing Dune for the first time. Um, so there's a lot of weighty concepts still to come in part two. And I am so excited to see how he handles them. You know, I mean, basically like worm piss is like a real, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a million. <laughs> <laughs> see how that's done well, you know. But that's the, but the, the that's the most interesting thing about taking novels that are a huge part of generations of people's lives and, and try to adapt it. When I obviously went and watched The Lord of the Rings, I'm a huge Tolkien fan. I've got atlases of Middle Earth and yeah. Second Age, Third Age. I've got everything. I've read everything with this man. I've seen people doing the same thing back then. The, the adaptation. Why have you took Tom Bombadil out of the movie? Why have you did this? Why have you put this in? Mm. It's a different medium. Yeah. It, it, yes. it obviously hits off differently with that very different audience. You can't manifest the same things that are, are done in a book onto a screen and and, mm. and have it work. It, it, Tom Bim- Bombadil for me was a terrible character anyway. It felt out of place. There was, no, there was no need for it. It, was a, it felt like a side step. It allowed us to give these hobbits these swords from the Barrow Downs just outside, outside the Shire. It was unnecessary for me. I, I personally loved the fact he cut that character out. I hate that part of the book when I read it. I kind of skip it. <laughs> but you see, it's what you're saying there, Johnny. You have different opinions. You have people saying, oh, you have to do it bit by bit or it's not a faithful adaptation. And you have, uh, likewise, people like me or you, different me with Lord of the Rings, you with Junior, also a huge, huge fan of June, what Herbert did. Taking that yeah, mindset, you have to do something different. You have to be fluid in the adaptation. Right, yeah. You have to cater for people who are coming in who have perhaps not read the books. So I, I like that fact that he did and he took such complex stuff going on in this world with this power, the voice, all of the, this, this incredible lore and he made it digestible to people who are perhaps not huge fans of the novels he came in. And that seemed to be the prevailing theme from people who or fans of both the books and hit off with this movie. They thought he'd right. done a great job of making it digestible, of adapting what was, I think, seen as an unadaptable novel. Yeah. People thought for a long time, you can't do it, it's impossible, because mm. there's too much oh, going yeah. on. And I think that's why it was necessary I, I, I to split it. Some of my friends still haven't seen it because they think it's unadaptable. And I, I, you know, I keep telling them, I like, I promise you that this <laughs> movie is more than just state-of-the-art special effects. This is really a, a, a totally unique um, adaption that I, I think that, that people really should uh, uh, take a chance on. Even if they maybe don't like really heady science fiction, I still think it's worth your time to at least give it a shot because it, it is, uh, you know, you have to just sort of be open to these these things, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like there's uh, the, the Lord of the Rings of the world, um, the godfathers of the world, the Godfathers of the world, the Citizen Kane's of the world, and the Dunes of the world. You know, these things that completely cement the genre and what it's meant to be and what everybody's sort of trying to achieve, like this sort of ultimate goal of, of art. Uh, and I think the Dune, you know, Dune is obviously in that conversation as well, uh, at least in the novel form. And I love that Villeneuve is, is chasing after it. And, it. and it's a dream that he's had for a long time, and, and I'm excited that he did it and did it so well. You can feel that passion. Yeah. You can feel that, why he was so fired up when there was talk of it going straight to a streaming service. He didn't want yeah. it. And yet, by all accounts, it's the hardest he's worked. Do you guys believe at any point the studio were not considering doing part two? The, apparently there was talk that the performance on the streaming service trumped the performance in the, the theatres. Mm. That was the talk, building up. How it performed on HBO Max, I think it was, would be more important to how the actual box office numbers were. That was a talk, and if it didn't do well, they wouldn't do it. Crazy. Thankfully, it did yeah, yeah. very, very well in the theatres and on the streaming service, so it happened. The, 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 obviously, you need a, a part two. Yeah. And, I, and for a, a last part of me getting into the theatre, I thought it was like a, a last chance saloon by Villeneuve sticking part one in later on, because I don't recall it being June part one in the build up. It was just no. June or Dune. I thought he stuck that in. Like, to force the hand, look, yeah. you need to give me this second part. You have to give yeah, me it. Yeah, and you like watch the movie, you, you, you need it. <laughs> you absolutely need it watching the movie. It's incomplete. As great a movie as it is for me, it's, it's definitely yeah. incomplete. There's a story to be told. And obviously, Zendaya is it Shanna? 
John I think the character's name complete, is... but you know that um, that ending was very satisfactory to me. You know, um, but it's probably because uh, you know I did know that part two was coming, and I was there was a bit of comfort in that, but. I think the way he ended that film was just perfect. I don't think it was ended in a way that was too cliffhangerish. It was that right. there was something about it that said there could there could be more coming. You know, if you're not aware of it, you've not read the books, and you get into this fresh, like I would imagine some people are. Oh, this this story can continue on. This is a large world we're dealing with here, and so many characters, and you know, so many layered stories going on. And I, you know, I think the way that the director handled this film was excellent. If he wasn't getting a second film, which I think the studio would have been absolutely mental not to do, but as a standalone film at the moment, I think it works. It really does work. You know, it's not a case of. I mean, you've got the growth of Paul Atreides. Yeah. Uh, from yeah. this young guy that's unsure of his place in the world, unsure of whether he can lead to the yeah. end, becoming a man and deciding, no, look, he's stepping out from his mother's shadow at the end and saying, nope, this is my journey. I've first seen it, this is who I have to be, and he becomes a man at the end, if you'd like, and I love that. Now.